Look for my kids. It's like they're dropping something. There they are in a palm nut tree. The Shelia palm. Yeah, they're with capuchins. The squirrel monkeys join up in the forest and forage together with capuchin monkeys quite often. Capuchins are the only animal which can open up the initial part of the palm cluster. And the squirrel monkeys hang around underneath and pick up nuts which are half eaten by the capuchins. Here we see an event filmed from different points of view. These shots are edited to create the illusion that they are happening at the same time, but they aren't happening at the same time. Manipulating viewers' sense of time is a technique that increases our emotional involvement and our sense that the event is authentic. As he looks for work, Luke Jenkins faces a high-tech world that doesn't have a lot of use for a 46-year-old bootmaker without a high school diploma. I've already got notices, you know, where if I didn't pay this bill or pay that one, it was going to be turned over to collection agencies. Here's an image that couldn't possibly have happened without the producer asking for it. Requesting a particular action in order to get just the right shot is a common form of manipulation in documentary production. Kat was planning to use her lunch hour to further prepare for the afternoon. She didn't know that a nightmare was heading her way. As I look back, you know, it's one thing, teachers are very protective of their own students at school. You know, you as a parent, or anybody as a parent, you're trusting when you send your children to school, that is supposed to be a safe environment. You know, it's one thing for me to be stern with my students at school, but let a stranger come in. Very protected, almost maybe like a mother hen. What had brought Jamie Wilson to this school on this day? What madness was driving him as he walked through the hallways? When it's this blatant, most adults and older children recognize that actors are playing some of the roles. But the mix of actors and real witnesses can be confusing in a nonfiction program. It's important to ask who and what is real in this program, and why did the producers make the choices they made? November 1988 man we'll call Luis was summoned to a ranch outside San Antonio, Texas. It was an appointment Luis had long awaited. Luis was there to meet Juan Magnoni. Authorities say Magnoni dealt cocaine and marijuana and was eager to expand his smuggling operation all over the Lone Star State. Brian, I used to fly those uh, high stakes in Asia back in the 70s. You ever seen the movie Air America? Brian Tilly was a Canadian national with arrests for passport and marijuana violations. Tilly, he'd flown in from Hawaii to start Magnoni's new operation. This is our man on the ground, Luis. You can trust him. There you go. Work out a lot, eh? Used to. Used to teach. <laughs> Want some? No, man. I don't, I don't do dope, man. I like to keep a clear head. And when are we going to get this thing on the road? Been waiting over a month. I'm tired of waiting, man. Oh, well, time's gonna be right. I got the perfect day. It's like a holiday, man. Everybody's gonna be in front of the tube. When's that? Super Bowl Sunday. Bengals and the 49ers should be a good game. Juan Magnoni and Brian Tilly had no idea their partner Luis was actually an undercover officer working for a Texas law enforcement agency. I went undercover for for months. You know, I, I was with them at their house. I'd eat with them sometimes, and uh, they trusted me. Okay, here's the setup. Luis's undercover work had paid off. At a briefing with U.S. Customs, U.S. Marshals, and local law enforcement, he laid out the detailed plan to bring down Magnoni and Tilly. If it's pointing south, that's the signal for him to land. If it's pointed in any other direction, that's a signal for him not to land. Pilot's name is Brian Tilly. He's really good. And he says he won't be taken down. Nobody, and I mean nobody, gets away from a Blackhawk. On Super Bowl Sunday, the airplane was supposed to be in here. 
great spot. They'll never find us here. We landed in a field site about six miles to the west and waited for the call. Come on, go back here. And at a ranch within sight of the landing strip, local police and U.S. Marshals moved into position. Now we've got to do is wait. Pilot is out. Our man is smiling. The jacket is off. Bingo, there's the pot. Okay, let's move, let's move. As a customs pilot, I can't land on top of people, I can't uh, ram people with my helicopter, and I can't shoot at people. He tried to fly into us. We uh, had to back off, then there was a big smile on his face. I can't believe this guy. The only response we got was, I guess, the international see you later sign and cross back into Mexico. As for Brian Tilly, agents believe he's returned to the United States. He's probably living in a warm climate, either right here in Florida, out in California, or possibly in Hawaii. In addition to his expertise at flying, Tilly has experience as a photographer and as an aerobics instructor. He has a Playboy Bunny tattoo on his left leg. If you recognize Brian Earl Tilly, call our hotline right now at 1-800-CRIME-TV.